The credit and debit card entry provides a quick, easy way to upload your monthly purchases into the accounting system. Multiple cards can be imported to distribute to overhead and job accounts. Each is posted separately once all the account and jobs have been assigned to the line items. In addition, the credit card items can be edited and reposted as many times as necessary without duplication. Attach images to any of the individual line items. The process begins with the card setup. Select the card button at the top of the screen. The credit account is for the liability or the cash account for each card. This is the offset for the entries charged to the card. For example, American Express is paid full in each month, so the credit account will be the cash. The Chase is paid partially, so the credit account will be a liability. As the card is paid off, a journal entry is done between the cash account and the liability account, rendering the credit account here the total amount still due on the card. Enter the card name and an abbreviated name for the card. This is the name that displays in the card dropdown from the selection when using the credit card process. The CSV format is selected for the proper card, and this determines how the downloaded file will be formatted. If you don't see your card in the list, we can create a format for the specific card needed. Enter the vendor name. This is the job transaction information that will display. Enter the main card number and an EFT hyperlink as a reference for the card payment location. Additional card users can be added with their card number and an expiration date. If used when importing the CSV file, the username will be included in each transaction. Reports can then be printed by user, which is a great tool if the users need to help code the purchases to the proper job accounts or approve them. Default accounts allow you to set up purchases with consistent distributions. For example, ePass, Meals, and Gas Vendors may consistently be charged to the same code. The charges come in with the same vendor name and then a different authorization code. Type as much of the consistent portion as you'd like and then the code that normally applies to the charges. The distribution will then automatically be added during the import of the CSV file, but can be edited if needed. If you find a vendor on your card for that month that has several items and they all go to the same place, you can still add the default account. And when you close this item, it will update each transaction with that account number. So let's import a CSV file. First of all, the month end date is important in that the CSV file and the information on it will be dated with the month end date for financial purposes. And the system does alert you on the way in of the date that will be used. You can always cancel and change the date on the main accounting screen. Or if it's already been imported, you can delete it and then change the date and re-import that file. So select the correct CSV for the card we have selected at the top and hit open. You'll notice that there are several line items already coded and these are the items we have set up in the default accounts. I'm looking and I see that Hawkview Technologies is here several times and say they all get charged to the same place. I can come up to the default accounts and I can type in the first few letters of that name and type in the account number. When I close the screen, I'll see that all the Hawkview Technologies is now updated with that new code I added. Any items still not coded will be displayed with a yellow line. If a job is added and a code is missing, it will also display in yellow. Until all the yellow items are gone, you cannot post the entries.
let's move to one that's already finished. So we'll look at our American Express here. One of the nice options we have in here is a print detail by user or all for the card. I can print all the transactions It does split it out by user, but every user is included on this report along with my grand total and a total per user. Or I can print for a single user. This is handy if the card users are the ones that are helping with the coding or if they need to approve specific line items. This report can be saved or it can be emailed directly to the user. Once the items are all set up and everything is coded, post the entries. These entries, again, can be posted as many times as needed. They don't go away once they're posted. I can always recall my information for the month and date selected. I can also view all months for this card by selecting the All Months button at the top. Now I can see multiple month end dates. If you're searching for something that may have happened in a previous time period, that's a good tool to use. You can then filter for specific items. Say I want to see everything that contains shell. I can just filter for that and see everything that's included for shell oil. Images can be added to any line item by hitting the Add PDF and browsing for the proper folder. It does default to the last folder selected, just like our other PDF options do. In this case, I had already previously selected my folder, and I can select the item at the top and add the PDF. Once PDFs are added, it will display the amount of images associated with the line item. Another option we have is the ability to tag a vendor if the line item needs to show on their 1099. Because this is not a payment through AP Checks, which is normally where the 1099 information is pulled from, you can enter a vendor on the 1099 vendor line and these dollar amounts will be included in addition to the checks paid for that year on the 1099. Let's take a look and see how these credit card entries display in both job cost and general ledger. If we browse GL transactions, one helpful item is the source. Anytime you have access to the source, which is normally on a browse transactions or a browse job cost transactions, I can see that my source of CC is for my credit card entries. So if I filter just for credit card entries, I can see the detail on each account. You'll notice that a job account shows up as a total card posting for American Express, and that's because the detail with the individual cost codes are displayed in the job cost transactions. So let's take a look at that. If I browse transactions for a specific job, again I can go to the source and take a look at just credit card entries. And now I can see not only who my vendor was, specifically, and this is coming from your card transactions, I also see that it came from my American Express. So in the past, by entering these as invoices, you basically saw American Express on your job reports. Now you'll be able to see the actual vendor and a reference to the card it was paid with. Give us a call if you should have any additional questions or would like to have a specific CSV file formatted for your card.